Hello and welcome to another Spark AR tutorial video. In this video, we'll be looking at hair segmentation and a few things we can do to change the options, adjust the settings, etc. So we're going to be looking at how to create a couple of effects. So again, skip through the timeline to the kind of input or control system you want. And hopefully this will kind of answer some queries that you may have. The first implementation of hair segmentation we're going to look at is how to create a simple color change effect. So in this setup, I've just got it so when I tap the screen, it changes the hair color of the user to a variety of different colors that we've selected. So I'm going to show you how this was set up. And again, this is just a kind of the most basic of setups. So we'll start with this. So I'll go with File New. Wait for this to load, there we go. And then I'm gonna to go to my camera and I'm just gonna make sure I've got my segmentation selected to create a hair segmentation. And hair segmentation is not supported on Facebook so we'll remove Facebook support. We will now just create a rectangle and we'll make this rectangle fill our scene. We will make a new material for this rectangle and with selecting this material, we're just going to call this hair, just so I know what the material is going to be associated to. And then I'm going to choose my alpha, turn that on, and I'm going to choose my alpha texture to be my hair segmentation texture. So what we've got now is we have this little uh, effect here, so you can see that the user's hair is now white. I'm just going to change the demo video to somebody who's actually got a bit more full hair so we can see it more in action. And what will happen is any texture that we assign up here or any colour that we choose here would be applied, like so. And I'm just going to keep that on white. We can also adjust the blend mode, so I tend to find that either add or associate alpha screen, um, screen or multiply tends to give different results, so again play about that as you see fit. Uh, I quite like to use add, so I'm just going to keep that on add for the time being. We can also adjust our hair segmentation softness and edge size like so, which again we've covered in the overview video. So now I'm just going to open up my patch editor. And this is where we're going to start inputting and controlling our hair colour. So I'm going to start off by adding a counter. So what this will do is it will count the number of actions, whether this is a screen tap or whether there is a kind of um, delay or something to trigger when the hair colour changes. I'm just going to use a screen tap uh, with a counter to be my control mechanism, but everything from this point on would be uh, the same setups. Then I'm going to pick an option picker. I'm going to change my option picker to be a colour. And then hook up my count to my input on my option picker like so. And then I'm going to go to my material and select the old arrow next to texture. And then hook this up to my option picker. So what this will do is this will take the first action or the first options, which is in this case zero. So if I was to change my different options, so let's say red, uh, let's go with a green. And again, I'm just picking random colors here. I'm not sort of spending any real time or thought about this. Like so. Uh, at the moment we have these five options but we don't have any way of kind of enacting them. So what we need to do is we need to get this option to change which is why we've got this counter. So I'm just going to use a screen tap because it's the most easy one to sort of demonstrate uh, working within the patch editor. And then I'm going to click and drag from my gesture state to my increase on my counter. So now if I enable screen tap or simulate touch, every time I tap the screen, it will increase my value by one and it'll toggle between these five colors, like so. And as you see, the quicker I tap, the more I can change through them. We could also do a similar principle for an animation sequence to have the colors cycle through a rainbow effect, which is hook up the animation sequence with the image sequence colors. And we'll look at that a little bit maybe later. But this is the most basic of um, systems. 
If we wanted to mix this color with a texture, what we would do is we would drag from the output on our option picker. We would add an add patch. Then we would bring in our texture. So I'm just going to find a uh, an image from my computer. So let's just try and find one fairly quickly. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo, what will we use? What will we use? Let's just use this. Uh, let's just use this one here of some random buildings, uh, 3D blocks. So I'm then going to click my texture, drag it into my scene, making sure that this add type is set to be color and then drag my RGBA from my texture onto my second value and then link this up to my hair diffuse texture. So what this will do now is it will add the color data to our image and blend the two together and give us this effect where we've got the kind of texture underneath. And this texture could also be an animation sequence, uh, now ble basically bleeding into and adding to our hair. We can also try things like divide. So if we try a divide, this will Oh, let's hook this up again like so, similar setup. This will now basically invert the texture essentially, but still give the color gradient over the top of it. And you can still play about with, so if we went to hair, we can still play about with the opacity. We could play about with the shader type or blend type, sorry. So again, this is a kind of uh, the most basic or primitive way of changing the color using the hair segmentation texture. The next control mechanism we're going to look at is how to use the native UI picker to change our color and also how we can apply the option for the user to actually pick the media from the actual device itself using the gallery texture. So if we look here at this little demo, if I click on these little icons here, I can change between this sort of sea green to red. And then if I click on this option here, it will actually apply whatever media I've chosen. So if I go to change media and just pick one of my thumbnails, for example, it will apply that texture like so. Um, if I choose a different one, it changes it. But as soon as I go back to one of these, it toggles back to the hair color. And this basically stores whatever our media selection is on the user's phone slash device. So let's see how this was created. So again, I'm going to go to File New and just start from the beginning. Okay, so we're now back at the sort of stage we was at at the beginning of everything. So everything we're doing with hair segmentation, we go through the same process. Uh, now this is where things get a little bit different. So I'm just going to call this rectangle hair color, just so I know which one this one's going to be uh, referring to, because we're going to need to duplicate some things later. I'm now going to bring up my patch editor. And down here in my assets, I'm going to press add asset, and I'm going to add the gallery texture. This will now add in the option for the user to be able to add their own media. So now we can have this gallery texture being applied, uh, and we're going to link this up to our hair segmentation. So the way I'm going to do this using the picker is I'm going to, within the patch editor, I'm going to right click and add the picker UI, like so. I'm just going to make this visible so we can see it. And then going to also just import some images. So for this to work, we're going to need some icons or the textures that we're going to apply to the hair. So for the color, all I did was I created these two small little um, images, so 100 by 100, and it's just a solid color. But again, you could have animation sequences or gradients, um, and this would still work the same. I'm just going to select these three images here, and I'm using this, this little Spark logo, but this would be an icon that indicates that the user can choose what image they want to be applied. I'm going to hit open, and with these three textures installed, I'm going to make sure that manual compression is set to no compression, otherwise we won't be able to choose them as an option in our picker. So now I'm going to go to my picker, and I'm going to choose the first option to be red, second option to be green, and the third option to be my little logo. I'm going to go back to my material, select the texture, and hook this up to my selected texture output on my picker UI. 
So now we've done that, we should see that we've got this little picker at the bottom. So I can choose between the red, the green, and if I press on the third one, um, we just have the default image, which is the logo that we have here. But if I click on add media, and was to choose a different image on my machine, you'll notice at the moment nothing is happening. And the reason that nothing is happening is actually this um, third texture here doesn't currently have the uh, link up to our gallery texture. So the way I fix this is I click on my material here, I press Command D or duplicate, because I want to keep the alpha segmentation on, but all I'm going to do with this new material is change it to be using my gallery texture. So now we have two materials. We have one, which is just for our flat color. And we're going to have the other one, which will be our gallery texture material. So the reason I named this uh, rectangle up here is because I need to duplicate it. So I'm going to press Command D or Control D to duplicate. I'm going to rename this duplicate just gallery option just so we know the difference. And what we need to do is be able to tell the user that when we're using these two options here, we want it to apply the color uh, and to apply the flat color material. But when we choose option three or whichever option we choose to be our desired change media material option, we need it to tell it to basically switch to a different material. And the easiest way of doing that is having two planes with different um, materials set. So I'm going to choose the gallery option and choose its material to be my gallery texture. So now we have our hair color and gallery option. You'll notice at the moment the gallery option now is over, you can sort of see it all the time. So if I choose any of your options, we can't see really any uh, difference happening because the uh, gallery option is over the top of it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to toggle the visibility of these two planes. So if we look back at our Netpicker UI, we've got this selected option index. And what this is, is it basically takes each of these three values here. So texture one is value zero, texture two is value one, and texture three is value two, and so on and so on. So I'm going to add an equals exactly, and I'm going to say if this equals exactly zero, one, two. So if this equals exactly two, then I want to toggle the visibility of these two planes. So I'm just going to select my two planes on my canvas. And I want to say the hair color is to not be visible if it is equal to two. However, if it is equal to two, I want my gallery option to be visible. So now if I choose the red, it goes red. If I choose option two, we've got the green. But if I choose option three, we should now have the gallery texture now shown. And again, to show this with uh, somebody who's got a bit more hair, to see it more in effect, you can see that now we can choose and have the user choose between the three options um, whilst using the picker option. Again, we can always go to the materials and adjust the kind of the way that it's dealt with it. So we could have add, so we've got a bit more of the hair definition back in. We can always still adjust the opacity and we could even overwrite the coloration and increase or decrease the saturation by uh, adjusting the default color here. So your texture here is what will be applied to the hair. So this image here is the texture that's applied to the hair. Um, and then basically we're swapping between two planes and using the picker UI and the change material gallery texture to swap between, to give us our third option where the user can select their own media. So hopefully this has been useful and it kind of gives you a few ideas on how you can use hair segmentation and control methods to change the user's experience. And again, you could use animation sequences and apply that as the texture input on our material uh, with the alpha being our hair segmentation. I'm not going to go through how to do that because it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, but remember to, if you like this video, to give it a like to comment and subscribe and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.